So hello. Um, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about the logic model. So up until now, we have focused a lot on the deliverable. Uh, you've had an introduction to uh, extension through, through Rod's lecture. Uh, but the other part to that is when we're doing these activities, giving talks, writing publications, those kinds of things, what are we trying to achieve? What's the issue? Who is the target audience? What are the outcomes? And that's really where the logic model comes in line. And so this is a really kind of a key part to the course because it really ties everything together. Uh, it, this is also going to serve as your outline for your um, extension plan. And so if you have a really good logic model, the plan pretty much writes itself from that standpoint. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the logic model, if you think about it, it really helps us decide what we want to do. So from a research project standpoint, you are looking at what the current scholarship is, what the literature is, you're attending professional conferences, uh, you're engaged with that researchers and people doing the work in that field of, of interest to you. And that's how you kind of figure out what are some of the questions that are left unsolved and how you might be able to address those with a research project. It's very similar to extension. So we're going to conferences, we're working with stakeholder groups, uh, public agencies, land management groups, those kinds of things. Um, Obviously, there's there's extension resources out there, so that really gets us a handle on in terms of the people who are key to the, our area, uh, what kind of issues they're having, what are the limitations, and it kind of helps us address what we want to do. But the other part to that is really the logic model, and so uh, this is really something that's been adopted uh, nationwide by extension. Uh, several grant programs also have adopted the logic model. And it's really kind of a way to help identify not only what the issue is, but the framework to really plan your program, how you're going to implement it, how you're going to evaluate it, which is really important. So it's really got a lot of uh, benefits from that standpoint. What is the logic model? Well, this is a very simple logic model. They take all sorts of different forms and things, but basically this is a very simple one that illustrates the point. So you have the headache. And so you do something, you get the pills, you take the pills, and then you feel better. The important part of this is the feeling better, right? Um, sometimes people get focused on the actions in terms of going out, getting the pills and taking the pills. And so from uh, an extension standpoint, we focus on you know, writing publications, doing programs and things like that. But ultimately, if we're not achieving that outcome, what's the point? And so that's really where the logic model can come in and help us to really plan and help us ensure not only how we're going to evaluate what we want to evaluate and whether or not we're really achieving those, those ultimate um, goals that we want to do with our programs. Oh, I forgot I had some, some things there. So this is, a, is an example of a more complex logic model, but they're all have different, basically the same parts. And so it's kind of a network of different things. And so for our purposes, um, we're gonna go, I'm gonna go over each kind of component and talk about what should be in those particular boxes and relate it to the things we're gonna do in this class and what you're gonna do for your plan. So lots of benefits, right? So the outcomes, and that's really the key. And so if you read that model left to right, you go from issue uh, inputs to activities to outcomes. So this is kind of like feeling better from the headache, right? right? And so this really helps us identify what those outcomes are. Has uh, a lot of things in terms of helps guide and focus work. And this can be a challenge sometimes uh, in, in a variety of different ways. So I often see with uh, new graduate students who are new to a graduate program, uh, they kind of want to do a lot of different things. And so the committee or your advisor really kind of helps you focus on what you really need to do. And so that's where your research proposal could come into play, right? It really kind of narrowly defines, this is what I'm going to do, and this is my plan moving forward. So it's the same kind of a thing with uh, the logic model. So it keeps you on track, keeps you focused on really what you want to do, because it's, it's easy for, and especially big long-term programs to kind of get sidetracked and doing that kind of thing. The other thing that goes along with that is the planning and management standpoint, um, intentionality and purpose. And so you'll hear a lot today when I talk about this, when we're talking about our outcomes, that uh, we're only including things in our model that is, are really intentional. There might, might be some things, you know, 
that happen as a result of our programs. But if it's not intentional, if it's not something we're going to measure, it shouldn't be a part of your it shouldn't be a part of your model. It just confuses things and just adds a lot of noise to it. Okay, so this is the the the, the kind of the, the sheet that we'll be using for our logic model. The first part of it is the title. Don't forget the title, and the title should be descriptive of what you're going to do from your extension deliverable standpoint and what the issue is, those kinds of things, just like any kind of a paper you would write. The second part to that is the situation. So what's kind of, this is the setup. And so from a planning standpoint, this would be kind of your introduction to kind of, here's the problem, this is what we're gonna do about it kind of a deal, right? And so from a logic model, there's three things we want you to include in your situation. What's the challenge or what's the issue? Who is affected? So that is your target audience opportunities to make a difference. So this is what you're going to do. So let me show you to kind of a, an example of, of this. And so I'm not gonna kind of read this whole thing, but you have a chance to, to kind of pause this and read it. Uh, but basically we're trying to figure out three things in this, right? So if I'm reading this situation, I wanna know what's the issue, who's the target audience, and what's the opportunity that I'm going to do or the, the writer of this plan is gonna do to kind of, kind of make a difference. And so if you read this, to me, the issue is that you've got the uh, NRCS provides a lot of technical advisory assistance for wildlife habitat, but most of them don't have any um, uh, training regarding wildlife. And so um, that, that is the issue. So who is affected? This gets a little... This, could, this is where your interpretation really comes into play, right? And so the way this is written, it's really talking about the, uh, the people who work for the Natural Resources Conservation Service. Ultimately, we're wanting to improve wildlife habitat on private land. So someone might say, well, the private land, private landowners are who is affected. Yes, but that's not really who we're working with. And so we're working with, and so since they're the ones that kind of drive the bus in terms of what they're going to advise people to do, the opportunity here is to provide some training opportunities for them to implement uh, wildlife uh, habitat planning and practices uh, in, the, in the farm bill programs. And so that's the opportunity. So, so based on this, I know I'm, I'm expecting in this logic model to see some type of a workshop or training program that someone's gonna implement for NRCS employees related to wildlife management practices and techniques. Okay, pretty, pretty logical, right? Pretty simple. The second part is uh, the inputs. And so um, this is basically what you invest in what's needed to, to do it. And what we want are these types of things, but don't just list uh, funding, don't just list uh, knowledge. Uh, talk about things that you really need to know that you need to, to do. And so if you're doing, so for example, sticking to my, so let's say, say we're gonna do a workshop for NRCS staff, okay? And so if that's an online workshop, there might be some resources that are required. If it's an in-person workshop, there might be some resources that are required in terms of money, uh, those kinds of things. So who's going to invest that, what it's, what it's gonna cost? Um, there might be other things that in terms of people that are involved. So obviously if I'm working with NRCS and doing a training program, I'm very likely working in partnership with some of their uh, uh, upper staff in terms of the, the, the people who manage the, the the, the field people, right? And so there might be that part of it. It might be I'm working with uh, private lands, wildlife biologists as well, because they do a lot of private lands work. And so I might, we might work with them as a partner. And so these are the kind of things to kind of think about it from that standpoint. And again, it depends on what you're gonna do. Obviously, if you're not doing any online things or whatever, you don't need to worry about in server, in internet servers and design softwares and those kinds of things. But if you're developing some type of an online tool that maybe helps people make decisions regarding planning or something like whatever, you know, those kinds of things are gonna to have to be there. Next on the list is uh, outputs. And so these are two things. And so these, the first category is what you do. And the second category is who you reach. And so you, we really want you to be very specific about both of these things. So first let's cover what you do. And so these are the activities. And so in a broad sense, this would be the kind of things that you would list, but we want you to provide a lot more detail. So in other words, I want to be able, we want to be able to read the things in this column and we, 
and then understand if and how they link back to the issue, what the target audience is, is as well as the outcomes that you list later on. OK, so if you can say just say conduct a training program, I have no idea who this is for. I have no idea what you're going to um, cover. Are they really related? Are the things that you cover in this program related to that? Um, sometimes people write, just write a, a publication. Well, is this like a, a, a newsletter? Is this like a one page article? Is this a book? I mean, what? So provide us some detail. And that it sounds kind of obvious right now, but it really helps kind of us when we're grading your logic model and providing you input to, to understand the linkages there. Sometimes people, whoops, I'm sorry about that. I used to be able to do that. Okay, let me see. I can do a laser pointer. So conduct research. Usually this does not belong in your logic model. If it does, it's usually more appropriate as an input. You need to develop some type of a, a information from your research project in order, and that's gonna feed into what you do for your extension deliverable, okay? But your extension outcomes are very likely not designed, not linked to your research specifically, right? Or your target, target audience. And so really think about that. And so um, I'll just kind of leave it at that. So let's look at some examples real quick, just a couple. So this might be one on a bird banding session where they're talking about holding a one hour session in the morning, demonstrating misnet setup, bird extraction from nets and bird processing banding. And so maybe this was in the context of doing some type of a program for high school students on getting them to the outdoors and introducing them to different types of careers or getting them introduced to the outdoors and you know, something along those lines, right? So you have an understanding of, okay, this is what the types of things they're gonna have them do. Another example in terms of the publication, you're just not writing, uh, hey, I'm just going to do this publication, but I'm looking at this is for the target audience and this is the things that it's going to cover. And so based on reading this thing, I'm guessing in the situation, one of the issues was water quality problems from Lake Michigan caused by, say, a runoff from surrounding residents or people in the watershed or something along those lines, you know, that kind of a thing, right, that, that feeds into Lake Michigan. So it gives you an idea of kind of what's going on there. <clears throat> so this is who you reach. So this is your target audience. And so um, we do not want you to list just farmers or professionals or students or whoever, but be very, very specific, really drill down in terms of who is the actual user or people who is going to attend your program, those kinds of things. Be very, very, very specific. And that's really key because um, you're not an extension professional. Hopefully, maybe some of you will someday, right? But you're not right now. You're doing this as part of your graduate program here at Purdue. You're doing usually one little part of a, maybe a big program or just an example of something uh, at a smaller level, right? So you're not gonna change the world based on one publication. So you really need to define who your target audience is and that's gonna help you define what your outcomes are as well. You also wanna list here funding partners and cooperators. And so maybe these are people um, that uh, are cooperating with, with the program itself. Uh, sometimes you have secondary audiences, right? And so as an example, uh, sometimes programs we do, the primary focus might be um, um, uh, extension educators, but maybe we also get some other professionals and things that come in there that, as well that you recognize that, have been, that can benefit from these kinds of things. But be narrow, narrowly defined your audience. So some examples, so a &R extension educators. So hopefully from Rod's uh, talk a little bit about an overview of extension. You have an understanding of, you know, extension is divided into four areas. Ag and natural resources is one of them. And so there's uh, at least one, usually or part of one in every county in Indiana. So that's a very focused group that is connected through communication channels and things. So that's a reasonable uh, thing. Uh, rather than listing all farmers, maybe someone's focusing on beginning small scale farmers and they have it defined. And so this is a much smaller subset uh, of farmers. And obviously they have maybe specific needs and things that are different from uh, large operations for that do, you know, corn and soybeans and those kinds of things. 
uh, aquaculture producers. And so while that on the surface might appear to be a large group, there's really not a lot of aquaculture production facilities in Indiana. So it's actually a very small defined group. And so maybe that could be an, uh, an option as well. These are just examples, right? There's a lot of different examples you can use. If you're doing some type of a youth or teacher program, you're probably gonna focus on a specific grade, maybe even at a specific school. So there's different things to think about regarding that. So look at some of these things. And so these are things that, that kind of come up uh, over the years when we look at things. Uh, really a lot of times with those two first two things from that standpoint. So if you're doing a K to five grade, kindergarten through fifth grade lesson plan about reducing food waste at the home, who is the audience? And so it really depends on what your outcomes are, how are you gonna evaluate those or how, what's your ability to evaluate them? Because basically you've got two groups here. You've got the teachers, that teach the lesson, and then you've got the students who learn. And so usually students a lot of times will focus on the students, but a lot of times it's really focused on, on the teachers. Uh, and maybe you're not measuring the food waste. It's, it comes down to like teachers are using natural resources based uh, lesson plans in the classroom. So you focus on them. It's a much smaller group, but it's a much focused group. And if you're gonna evaluate an extension program, if this was, you know, done uh, professionally, that might be a consideration because the, the kids then are spread out, they change every year, how would you evaluate that? So that's something to consider. A lot of times too with things that the problems are really broad scale and there's a lot of things that go into why it's a problem, right? If things were easy, if, you know, usually the things that we have that are problems aren't really easily solved, that's why they're problems. And so invasive species, there's a number of different reasons why we have issues with invasive species on the landscape. One of them is that it's sold at stores, right? And so is the audience, should it be the stores? You know, is the focus of this working with vendors, trying, you know, to reduce or eliminate what they sell in terms of invasive species, because that's still a problem for aquatics and maybe some other things. Or is the target audience the prospective customer? So maybe the program is focusing on people who buy things at stores and teaching them, maybe focusing on the type of questions they should ask and things like that about, is this invasive or how, how do I find out if I know if something's invasive, maybe some resources that they're not aware of online, you know, those types of things. So you really think of it from that, those standpoints. And so then we have the outcomes. And so you see there's three different outcomes here, short, medium, and long-term. I'm just gonna go through these, uh, what they are and give you some examples. And so the things in the short uh, term outcomes, uh, we term these CASA. So these are knowledge, awareness, skill, and aspiration. And so you might, you know, just knowing that something exists or gaining some type of a knowledge, maybe it's a, a, in terms of, you know, what the specific problems are. And, you know, if you're talking about invasive species, maybe it's how to identify, you know, those kinds of things, um, the knowledge to, to do it or knowledge to control it. Um, those kinds of things. Sometimes these things can get a little bit hairy in terms of are we talking about knowledge or are we actually teaching them the skill to do something? So knowledge might be uh, they learn basically how to identify plants in terms of the different types of you know things you look at. They might be aware of resources to help them do that. That's an aware, awareness thing. But the skill to actually basically have them do that. Um, are you really having them in the in the the workshop, you're, are they actually going out practicing that skill and demonstrating that they actually have the ability to do that? If not, it might only be an awareness and knowledge thing, not necessarily a skill. Then the last thing is, is aspiration. So this is often a pretty important one, extension, because that's the intention to do something. So usually with an extension program, we want them to learn something as a result of that, do something for some intended outcome, okay? So a lot of times that's after the fact that we have that intervention, that program with them. Uh, but we not necessarily maybe measuring their behavior directly, but a next best thing might be to look at behavioral intention because that's a predictor of be doing that, those kinds of things, right? And so that's something that we're interested in as well. So just as, as an example, when you're doing these, you would list who the target audience is. Uh, sometimes people have multiple target audiences. We really don't recommend that because it adds a lot of complex complexity to it. Um, some of you may be doing different things for different groups and that's fine. 
but for the purposes of this class, you may want to consider just modeling one component of that focusing on one target audience. So this would be the target audience, whoever that is, will increase awareness of common invasive species that occur in Indiana woodlands and the damage that they cause to native plants. Okay, And then this is more about what the, the method and strategies, how you control invasive species. And then this, the skill would be to how do you actually do that? So what, are, you know, if you're using a herbicide, how do you mix the herbicides? How do you apply the herbicides? You know, those kinds of things, that's, that's a skill, right? Uh, and then aspirations and that after they take the course, they're gonna go out within the next six months and use at least one method or strategy that they learn to control invasive species in their woodlands, okay? So that's an example of outcomes that are quite, that are kind of linked logically that, 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 are, that are all kind of related. It, again, it depends on how in depth you're going with a particular resource or program that if, if indeed like all those are gonna be listed. The next thing is medium outcomes, okay? These are behaviors, these are actions. People are gonna do something, they're gonna make decisions. Those are kinds of the thing. But I, again, the thing that I wanna stress is that these are planned in the design, okay? A lot of times what happens is you can envision maybe some other things happening, them doing something as a result of the, the, uh, the, the activity that you do, but if it's not planned, if it's not intentional, it doesn't belong in a logic model. So some examples, so these are Michigan Lakeshore residents. So basically they attended the program, they learned about the water quality issues that how you manage your property can really that can impact it. And so basically they're gonna go out and adopt some type of a small scale conservation practice on their home to reduce nutrient inputs. And so maybe that's related to focus on nitrogen reduction or, or something along those lines in terms of fertilizers, those kinds of things. Um, you know, so you get it. So the teachers who attend the workshop, they're going to use the videos available lesson plan. So again, the, go, going back to that food waste example, it's not focused on the students, it's focused on the teachers. So ultimately it reaches the students and that's a good thing. But for our program, we're focusing on the teachers because that's who we can work with directly. That's what we can measure. And so that's why we're doing that. Sometimes what happens when you do youth programs is the focus on home or school. So maybe with these kinds of things, the food waste reduction strategy, is that something that the kids are gonna do at lunch at school? Or is that something that they do at home? And if it's something that they do at home, are you really measuring the actions they do? Or are you interested in them? You just want them to, to tell mom and dad, hey, I learned about this school and let's pledge to do one thing and bring back, bring back that pledge at, at, to, to school for your teacher. You know, those are kinds of some of the things you got to think about. And a lot of times when you're going through this, you may kind of switch back and forth on what, what might be bet, best. It just kind of depends on that. And then the last thing uh, is the long-term outcomes. And so um, these are the things that are, are conditional. So it might be some kind of environmental condition, some financial condition, a social kind of a thing or some type of status. Uh, there's a lot of different things this could be. So these are kind of the things that are really what we desire long-term when we're conducting long-term extension programs. They're also the most difficult thing to achieve and to measure as well. So some examples, so basically food waste is reduced in participating schools. And so you teach, so getting back to that food waste thing. And so this is, this is the thing, right? And so the lesson plan, is that you have a developed this lesson plan and teachers learn about it, how to use it, they apply it in class. And so should the long-term outcome be the ultimate thing related to the food waste or should the long-term outcome be that um, natural resources are incorporated in the curriculum at in, you know, West Lafayette High School or something like whatever, whatever program you're doing. So you see what I'm saying? So it really, really depends on that. And so um, those, are the, those are the kind of questions that you keep asking yourself in terms of like who, who my audience is, what am I really trying to achieve and what am I really trying to measure, okay? Even though evaluation isn't something that's required for, for you all, but it helps to really go through the process and, and get a good logic model. Okay, so these are kind of some things to kind of think about. <clears throat> Sometimes it's confusing to think about what are short-term outcomes and what are medium-term outcomes. And so if you think about it, if I'm identifying something, then that's an action, but is it that they're actually going out and doing that, taking some type of a, 
um, evaluation on their property in terms of identifying uh, invasive species on their property, or is it that they have the ability to identify different uh, suite of invasive species that you covered in there? So that's that's a skill knowledge kind of thing. So basically, even though some of these are kind of actiony, uh, think about it in those terms. Are they are they actually doing something that you taught them to do, or do they have the ability to do it? Okay, and so these are some action verbs to kind of think about, help you think about what are short-term outcomes, what are midterm outcomes. I think those two things are commonly confused with, with students over the years. Another way to think about it is, is activities and outcomes. And so sometimes people get confused with what's an activity and what's an outcome. And so it's not how many worms the bird feeds, it's young, but it's how well the fledgling flies. So, so uh, the activity is feeding the birds <laughs> worms, right? But the, the outcome is really that they grow, they're able to fly, those kinds of things, right? So really think about it from that standpoint. So going back to our big logic model thing, um, just got a couple more things to cover here and then we'll be done for this, this lecture. And so, you know, it's a logical kind of a thing that we typically have approached it left to right. But if I'm planning this, that I'm also looking at it from right to left. So this is ultimately, if I'm planning a program, what's the big picture problem? What am I really trying to address? What do people have to do to, in order to do that? What do they have to know? What kind of skills and knowledge are they, do they have to know to, in order to do those things to meet that condition? Okay. In order to do these kinds of things, you know, what do we have to do and who the target audience is that really relates to this ultimate thing we're trying to get to. So you kind of get the idea. Sometimes you, you can work these from right to left backwards and that kind of helps like uh, do that, uh, find the connection that you're really looking for. Okay. Cause really all these things are kind of connected uh, in, in a way uh, from that standpoint. So that's something that we're, we're always going to look at in terms of, in terms of that. So you may have the right type of outcomes in the short, medium, and long-term boxes, but are they connected? So basically, does it really make sense that if they increase their knowledge on how to control things, they have the skill to do it, that they're actually going to do some type of a, a, a midterm outcome from that, that it's really going to result in the long-term shift. And so um, you really have to evaluate those as you write this over and over again to really see not only if those outcomes are connected, but are they connected with the situation and the target audience, the issue in the, in the situation? Are they connected with the activity that you're doing? By doing this activity, are they really learning these types of things? Okay, so those are the things that you're constantly asking yourself. How you phrase it is really important. So really be particular about that. Sometimes one or two words can totally change an outcome from a long term to a medium term to even a short term. OK, again, I really want to stress only plan outcomes. Uh, you might be thinking other things can happen, but if you're not teaching people on how to do something, you know, that kind of thing, they shouldn't be a part of it. OK, and if these things aren't the case, then you might have to rethink what is the issue? Is the issue I'm addressing really important? Sometimes what happens, and I alluded to this earlier, is sometimes you've got kind of the the broad, the ultimate issue, right? So again, with invasive species, that's the big issue, right? Because it has uh, an effect on diversity, uh, has effect on a lot of things, right? But there's a lot of reasons why that's the issue. The issue is people are planting things. There's an issue that people don't know how to control plants. There's an issue that people aren't even aware it's, a, it's an issue, right? So they're going through, maybe they like the way bush honeysuckle looks. And so they, they encourage it on their property and things like that. So there's a lot of different things that go into it. For your logic model, very likely you're going to, like all those different issues with a, with a broader issue, you're going to pick one little part of that and that's what you're going to address, right? Okay, you're not going to solve invasive species problems in the Midwest by one publication. Okay, so really think about that. So you notice there was other parts of that model. The bottom part was evaluation. I'm not going to talk about that now, but a couple of different things that are really important in terms of if you're really doing a program, it really helps you think about it and sometimes helps you um, change the way you do it. The first things are assumptions. So we make a lot of assumptions when we do a program, right? 
And so uh, it, there could be a lot of different, different things about it. Sometimes it might be how a certain technology works, okay? Sometimes it might be if they're doing an online thing, we're assuming people have the ability to access those things. That's not nearly an issue what it, what it used to be, okay? So think about those things. Those are really important. Uh, a good way to do it is think about the, the everyday logic model I introduced, right? So there are some, some assumptions there, right, in, in terms of, of this. Uh, some that come to mind might be, do they have access to the pills? Usually that's not a, not a problem, but that might be, especially, you know, in today's time with uh, what we're dealing with, with, with COVID, right? Uh, they take the pills, but we're also assuming that they're taking the appropriate pills, the right dosage, the right amount uh, from that standpoint. But there also, there might be some other things. We're assuming that the pain they're feeling from their headache is caused by just the general headache kind of a thing. But there could be some more seriously underlying conditions that the pills that they take uh, aren't going to address, right? And so there's different things. So you really kind of think about these kinds of things that how, how it goes into it, it can really kind of change the way you approach a particular program. The last thing I'll talk about are the external factors. So these are things you can't control, right? And so obviously, um, you're, if you're doing an outdoor program, you can't control the weather. And so if that's really, a, if you're doing a program, say in April, that's outdoors, you might want to really be, rethink that in terms of what are some things I might want to change the way I do it, right? But there are some other things, you know, so from a wildlife habitat standpoint, which is my background, there are things that can definitely affect a program that are out of our reach, right? So in a lot of times, uh, the ability for a private landowner to implement wildlife habitat practices comes down to the ability for, for cost share programs. And so I have no control over what the federal government or the state governments put towards those programs or if they continue those programs or how they implement those programs, right? So that's definitely something that can happen. Uh, commodity prices, that's a big thing, land prices. So if corn all of a sudden is five, six dollars a bushel, you know, farmers really aren't going to have a lot of um, uh, um, interest in maybe changing land use from even if it's marginal cropland, they can still make money off of it if the commodity price is high. Well, if the commodity price is really low, they might actually be able to make more money by enrolling in some of these cost share programs. And so those are things that obviously can affect things as well. So uh, it just depends on what you're doing, but these are things we really want you to kind of consider as you move forward. And the last thing I'll touch on is model consistency. I said this before, but this is really a, a reiterative process. And so you'll write your logic model out, but really kind of walk through it forward and backwards. Are all the pieces really fit? Is it consistent? Is it realistic? Okay. And so usually if it's not, um, the, pro the common problems we have is you're not focusing enough narrowly on your target audience. Maybe you're not focused enough narrowly on your issue. Uh, you're trying to do too many things with it, okay? So those are the kinds of things to think about and just kind of really be very focused about it. So, so that's really kind of um, um, the, 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 the kind of the primer to logic model. So you may find, and this PowerPoint will be available uh, on the, on the uh, Brightspace uh, page as well. So you can kind of uh, revisit it uh, to that extent. <clears throat> clicking too much. Okay, so that's it. So in class, we're going to go over some examples and logic models. We're going to break out into groups. We're going to evaluate some of these, come back and have a discussion. And so by hopefully going through this process, looking at examples, uh, again, it'll kind of help you do this. So this is one of those things where um, the more you do it, the better you get, just like most things. And so initially, uh, when students do this exercise, um, this is kind of something that um, doesn't come easily to some, some it does. And so it just kind of, uh, you know, hang in there. And I think if you go through this, uh, revise your logic model as we move forward. And if you have a really good solid model, it'll really help your plan and what you do with your available, uh, deliverable when you leave class. So that's it. And we'll see you in class next week. Thanks.